Praise the Lord, everybody. Living Word, we're so good to see everybody today. Good to have Andrew here with us today. And uh, the, of course, a little feeling under the weather here, but but uh, Jury, uh, she's not feeling well. That's why she's not up here today. But it's so awesome to have our brother back in town, and, and we're thankful that he's here today. And all of you, would you stand with us? We're going to get right into the Word here today and into singing and worshiping and praising and whatever God wants us to do. How many of you open for what God wants today? Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 And you know, the greatest one of the greatest things is, is in the midst of everything going on, no matter what's going on in, in your life, we have a friend. His name is Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Isn't that great song? This is, I am a friend of God. Let's worship. Let's praise. Let's give him praise today. He's worthy. I'm glad he's my friend. Amen.
Hallelujah. Amen, amen. And whatever the problem is, he opens the doors. He makes a way when there is no way. Aren't you glad he's a way maker? That's what he is. He is a way maker. Amen.
Hallelujah. Lord, you are a way maker. You are a promise keeper. You are everything that we need. Father, we just celebrate your goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, it feels good in the house today. Feels good in the house today. God bless you. You may be seated. If you're at home, we welcome you. I hope it feels good and warm where you are. It's good and warm here. It just feels good. It does. Uh, I got to tell you, I've been pastoring a long time. I saw the weather last night. I was like, oh, Lord. Somebody said there might be snow flurries about 3 in the morning. You know what that means. That means everybody's got to get up, go make a, a run for the bread and the milk, and, you know, in case we're stuck in for two hours or something. <clears throat> but uh, I wanted to text everybody and say, the roads are open. It's, it's, well, what a, what a good gathering of people that... I tell you, you had to be brave just to step outside and, and get, in, get in the cold for a moment to get to your car because uh, it, it is a little, well, I think I know what happened. My cousin's with us today. How many of y'all saw the, pull up, you saw the pool, uh, the pool truck outside the pool bus? And you wondered, Lord, are we getting a new, a new outside baptism or something like that? Uh, that's my cousin. He, he owns a pool uh, business in, uh, in Indianapolis. So, uh, if any of y'all are listening out there in Indianapolis and need somebody, call my cousin. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're, they're down, uh, uh, he and Garen on their way uh, down to the coast to uh, uh, an annual event that they uh, have gone to now. And as so they stop by, and we haven't seen, seen them in a couple, actually a couple of years now. And, and, uh, and then before that was a long time. But, but we're glad he's, uh, they're here today. It's, it's a great day. It's a great day. Uh, I said, I'm gonna, we're going to catch up after service, go out and get a little bite to eat. I haven't been eating during the day, and I, I think I put in, uh, in your bulletin, it's, we, we're, we've been doing a fast of different types, and, and 
my old version, my 2.021 version, did not like the hunger part, okay? So uh, I'm not sure the new version that we're updating here in this series is, is real fond of it either. <clears throat> but uh, uh, hey, we're going to catch up on old times and see what's happened uh, up in, with our kinfolk in Indiana and Kentucky. And then Andrew, my Andrew, it's so good to see. It's, it, you know, we talk about him a lot and his influence is felt here all the time, but it's my brother. I mean, just, just he really is like my, like my brother indeed. And, and so I'm glad you're here today. And, uh, Lord gives you a word, you just raise your hand and, and we'll, that's right, we'll, we'll work it in. Uh, uh, we, we do have some that, uh, you know, folks are in need of prayer. Uh, we don't always give prayer requests, but Tanya's, uh, Tanya Thrower's father is in ICU. He's, he's suffering, uh, uh, you know, at a stage of this COVID battle that, that uh, he just, just needs, needs our touch. He's not, uh, not on a ventilator at this point. But they've talked about it. But uh, he, he needs, today's a good day for the God to give him a touch that he needs. And then Billy and Betsy have a, they're, they're at the hospital w waiting on a grandbaby to get here. So, uh, and I know other people have other things that's going on, some that wouldn't perhaps even want mentioned that are physical and other things that they're going through. There are people who are watching that, that are recovering from COVID and, and, and it's, it's okay in your house. But uh, there are others who are in a, in, a, in a struggle time. So, in fact, let's just take a moment of prayer. I just sense the Spirit of God here in a special way this morning. And, and so, just, let's just take a moment. Would you join me at home? And just let's join in prayer for those. Father, there are many needs that we've mentioned. There are many needs we know about that we won't mention. But, Father, you're God of them all. And that one Spirit does so, so many things in our midst. It grows and matures us. It, it, it humbles us in times when we, are, when we need to be brought down. And it lifts us when we need to be brought up. Lord, it heals, it saves, it delivers. It's a way maker, promise keeper. And so in this room, and, and the, but the families represented in our church, Father, there's a lot of needs. And you're everything that we need. Whatever the situation calls for, you are that. You said, I am that, I am. And so, Lord, we ask you to be that, that is needed in each of these situations. People that are, that are in a time of medical crisis for themselves or for their family, and, and they're distraught today. Would you speak peace to the hearts of those uh, who need that peace and, and, and let them receive it now? And then we speak healing into the bodies of those that need it. We speak in this room, Father, that you will develop us and grow us and give us an open heart and mind to receive the word that is uh, going to mature us and take us to another level. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, get your, if you're here, get your sermon outline out. We're going we're gonna, to uh, share, uh, picking up where we were last week. Last week, we began a series talking about becoming the best version of of you. We called it U.2.022, U which obviously, you know, if you think about it, you, you get where that's coming from. If you just announce it, people aren't sure <clears throat> what we're talking about. But we're just saying every now and then we need to plug in and get the latest update from the Holy Spirit to make us a better person, to make us better than we are today. <clears throat> so we've kind of We've talked kind of a subtitle, Becoming the Best Version of You. And there's a lot of places in that phrase to give emphasis. Last week we talked about a little about the you part. And that is becoming the best version of you means you don't have to be like somebody else. You see somebody else with different gifts, with a, a different anointing, a different calling. You don't have to turn yourself into them in order for God to love you. You just be the best version of you. Uh, we have three sons, and they're not all alike. <clears throat> and that, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, sometimes I'm not like myself. <laughs> and I guess that's all right, too. But we're all different. And, and if we're not careful, the, well, the Bible said if you start comparing yourself with other people, it's not wise to do. Because somebody else it has a different anointing. <clears throat> and let me say this to you just real quick. 
before we move on, I have a lot to cover, but let me say this. Sometimes the anointing that you have seems so easy that you don't think it's really special. You play the violin so well, and, and, and you, know, you play the piano so well, and you both earn your living with your gift, but you do it so effortlessly, it seems. That's because you spent your lifetime getting to where you are until other people look, boy, I wish I could do that, and I can't, I can't do anything because you can't play an instrument that they play like they play it. But God has called you to be you, so you be the best version of you instead of putting yourself down because you're not on the level with somebody else. What you do may not be play a violin, but what you do may be write poetry. Maybe you write cards. And, and there are people, Sister Ruth is one of those, she writes cards and, and sends them out. And th that is such a, that's a, such an encouragement and lift and, boy, well, anybody can do that. No, they can't. I've had some cards I wish they hadn't sent. <laughs> All right, let, let me, let, y'all understand. <laughs> You make it look easy when it's your gift. So be the best version of you. Now, don't be the same version of you. Say, well, here I am. Take me or leave me. No, I want to be a better person. I want to be a better version this year than I was last year. And we're talking about how we get there, okay? Um, <clears throat> we also can talk about the best version. And, and, and that means that... Uh, Becoming the best version of you means, again, that we're not going to stay the same. There's a change that's taking place. And the word becoming, we'll focus on a little bit today, too, which means it's a process. It's not just something that happens all at once, but it's a process. Well, we're called to be disciples. That's, we're his disciples. And, and we've said before, and we'll say again, because it's the root of what we talk about and are, that discipleship is really a lifelong process. But there are certain times along the journey of life that we pause and we get a little update. And I think the first of the year is one of those good times. We've, we've done it for many years. It's, it's a common time. First of all, we get a fresh start, okay? Uh, we, it, every, the past is the past. We've got a new year, like a new football season, you know, no losses, uh, uh, no wins yet, but there, it's coming. And so we've got a new chance, new opportunity. Second, everybody's on the same page of the calendar at the same time. And so we have a little fast time and prayer time. And we said last week it's not a legal matter where, you know, well, you must do this. And, and it, it, that's not what it's about. It's about updating ourselves, getting in contact with the Holy Spirit, focusing on what the Holy Spirit is wanting to say to us and letting Him change us and make us different and, and therefore make us better. And so every one of us who has a computer uh, has been told every now and then, we need to update. And the software would tell you it's time to update. And mine usually tells me this, because it knows me well enough, yours knows you too, it says, pick a time when you won't be using me, <laughs> like three in the morning, and let me update then. And, and you know why? Because it's, I, it, it's saying to me, I need an uninterrupted time in order to get this processing done. And the Holy Spirit's trying to tell us the same thing. Holy Spirit's saying, can you find a time in your life when you're not so busy? that I can uninterruptedly update and process what you need to hear because every time the Holy Spirit starts speaking to us, we get busy on our phone. Every time the Holy Spirit starts speaking to us, we turn on the radio, turn on the TV. There's always, there's, there's, there's how many channels are there available? Nothing worth watching on any of them, but how many channels are there on the TV we can pull in? How many channels on the radio? AM and FM and, and XM and, and, and so it's, it's all out there and the phone, it's, it's constantly dinging. It is. And so it's hard for the Holy Spirit to find that time when we just close everything else out and we listen to what the Spirit's trying to say. That's what this whole thing's about, okay? That's, that's what this is about. And it's not really a thing new. There's some new stuff I'm saying in here and some stuff that I've said before. <clears throat> a lot of it I'm reminding me. I'm preaching to me. I hope somebody else gets something out of it. At home, this is for you too. Okay. Now, the update is supposed to make some changes in us. It, it changes, makes me better in how I 
think and how I act and how I, I react. One of the problems is a lot of us is res- a lot of us are resistant to change. We kind of like things the way they are. We got our routine. And we don't like anything messing up. Messing it up. That's why my stomach says, okay, now tell me again, what's going on and how long is this thing going to last? You you know, it's just like, okay, I might work with you here, but you're going to have to help me out a little bit and tell me, (coughs) excuse me, tell me what's going on. Well, change is not necessarily a bad thing. Change is really normally a good thing, uh, but it's not automatically necessarily a good thing. But as believers, we should embrace it and, and not have a default setting of no every time the Holy Spirit tries to change us. In fact, let, let me say it this way to you. Very, very simply said, change is at the heart of the gospel. Change is at the heart of the gospel, and it is the hope of the believer. Let me, let me just break that down. It's almost broken down enough, but the message of repentance is about change, a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of attitude, a change of action. 2 Corinthians 5.17, we, we, it's a favorite of every pastor, has to be. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So that's change. At the beginning of your Christ walk, there is change. If, if it isn't change at the beginning of your Christ walk, you, you didn't start walking with them. There's change. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. And, and, and then on the other end, the, uh, the, the book end of that, at the very end of it all, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Amen? That, that was our, that's always been our church nursery motto. Praise God. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. <clears throat> and then here's what he says. On the end of it all, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall <coughs> be changed. So change is at the beginning of our Christ walk. It's at the end of our life. It shouldn't be a surprise to us that it happens in between as well. But there's a difference between the change that happens at the beginning and the change that will happen at the end as opposed to the change that happens in the middle. There are a couple of main differences. The first thing is this. Whereas change at the beginning and the end of a believer's life is instantaneous. If you fill in the blank, I'll give you some time to fill that in. No points will be deducted for misspelling. But it happens just like that. It's a quick thing. When you're born, a new birth, there may be a, a time when the baby's about to be born, but you're either born or not born. You're either saved or not saved. You're not almost saved, just like you're not almost pregnant. You either are or you're not. Okay? The same thing at the very end. When... when the Bible said in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, I'd call that instantaneous, wouldn't you? I mean, it's a quick thing. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. But I've got to warn you, what happens in between those two doesn't happen always like that. In fact, most spiritual change in a believer's life takes place as part of a process called The spiritual word for it here is transformation. Transformation. Okay, we're being transformed. We're being changed. Now, a second way it's different is the Holy Spirit is what takes, what's causing the change at new birth. Okay, I'm a believer, but the Holy Spirit gives me new birth. Born of the Spirit. At the end... I'm not going to have a lot to do about in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, I shall be changed. Okay? That's, I'm trusting him for that. But in the middle, I have a lot to do, you have a lot to do with the spiritual change that takes place in your life. I'm not discounting the work of the Holy Spirit. In fact, next week, I intend to accent the work of the Holy Spirit in this updating process. But, I put it in your outline this way, only God can change your heart. Only you can change your habits. 
Okay? Does that make sense to you? Only God, God will do what only God can do, but there are some things in this spiritual transformation that you have to do. Well, I thought it's, I'm just, it's all the Holy Spirit. No, it isn't. If it were, you would not be told, I would not be told, we would not be told by Paul to put off the old man with his ways, with his thinking, with his habits, with his attitudes, and put on the new man. The Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God. That's something we do. The Bible says to set your affections on things above. It didn't say the Holy Spirit will set your affections for you. It says there's something that you and I have to do in this process. The Bible says if, there, if there's any virtue, any praise, if there's good report, if there, these things are true, think on these things. He didn't say that he's going to think for you. You have to choose to be a part of this process. Being born again doesn't make you robotic. You're not, I'm saved and now... We're spirit-led, not spirit-dragged. Okay? He leads us. If we'll follow, he's our leader. But he doesn't make us, he doesn't compel us without our consent. That makes sense to you? And so this, that's why we're doing, that's why we're gathered here. That's why we're worshiping. That's why we're, all, we're in a process, Lord I want to leave here today better than I came in. And part of that is happening through the Word. Part of it is happening through the worship. Part of it is happening because you are a willing vessel and you're open. We didn't confess it today in a, as we do sometimes, but you've got an open mind. You came today with an open mind, with an open heart. Some of you came a long way to get here. And you know, some of you, some of you, 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 drive, you work out of state, but you, Andy, you drive in. In part, to be here and be part of things. It's to be with, uh, with daughter, but it's also, you, you could have taken that time elsewhere, but it's important because you want to be a better Andy in 2022 than you were in 2021. And that doesn't mean we're bad in 2021. It means we want to be better. Make me better. I want to be improved. I want to be developing. I want to be more effective as a father and a husband and a pastor and a friend. And I need the update. I need the update. Because the old one, I don't have all the things and we won't go back through them, but the old one has some tendency, has some ways, and, and I want the update to fix a lot of those attitudes. <laughs> Anybody, anybody still dealing with some? Okay. Update in progress. Okay. Romans 12, verse 1 and, and verse 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, and that's generic, that's, that's all of you, brothers and sisters. I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy. Oh, there's so much to talk about that. To offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Holy and pleasing to God. Let me, I want to say this in... 15 seconds. When he says in view of God's mercy, it's just kind of interjected there. And that's a way of saying, if you think I'm going to ask something of you, would you remember what he did for you? Would you remember Calvary? Now, is it too much to ask for you to make a commitment and surrender of your life in view of what he did for you? Okay, so that look, I don't want that context to be missed there. In view of God's mercy, I'm asking you, brothers, I urge you, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but here it is, but be transformed by, you can circle that next phrase, the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. And then... You'll be able to test and prove what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so, one of the major methods of updating ourselves, and it's not just one time a year, it's a, regular, it's a weekly thing, it's a daily thing, but especially it's a common uniting of all of us together are trying to update at the same time. Because we want Living Word to be a better version, the 2.022 version, to be a better one than last year's version. We want to love 
those who need God's love a little better and more effectively than we did. We want our outreach to be better. We want our worship to be better. Amen. We want our discipleship to be better. We want our ministries to be more effective one to another. We're going to get better at it. And so we're, we're helping ourselves in that process to be better because we're submitting to Him and renewing our minds. One of the major methods of this happening is the renewing of the mind. It's one, how, do, how do we update? How do we update? Where do we get it? What, where do I click? We renew our minds. You're transformed by the renewing of your minds. Now, being transformed, as we've said earlier, it's a process. It's a process. And I'm grateful for all the spiritual experiences that, that are available to us, and they're part of the growth process. But the truth is that growth and transformation takes place not like that. It takes place over time. It's kind of like losing weight and building muscles. Two things I know nothing about. <laughs> okay? But I know this. It doesn't happen just like that. It's a process. Now, let me say, there are some more effective ways of losing weight and some less effective ways of losing weight. More effective ways of building muscle, less effective ways of it. Okay? So it's not like, well, it's just whatever you do. No, there are, there are some people who've had better success at it. I want to listen to them. I want to read after them. I want to study them. I want them to be a mentor in some way, long distance or up close. Uh, there are some shortcuts you can take. I don't want the long version. Tell me, tell, me, tell me something that might help me a little bit in this process. So I said, well, it's not the minutes you spend at the dinner table that's hurting you. It's the seconds you're getting there. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Point well taken. <clears throat> Little things like that might help. They just, they just might help. Might not want to hear that, but, uh, but they might help. <clears throat> so, see, all churches, all churches should be in the, uh, uh, in the business of helping people begin the Christ walk and mature in the Christ walk. But not all of them do that as effectively as others. And, and, and so we want to be effective in what we're doing. Uh, my, look, you can come to church and uh, for you to come out on a cold South Mississippi day. God bless you. And those who are tuned in, we're grateful you're tuned in too. But let me tell you, if, you're, if, you go, if you get up and go to church every week, but the atmosphere is not one of worship, there's no challenge to be renewed or let the Holy Spirit grow and develop us, just going isn't going to change you. It isn't going to change you. You need to be, and I, I, I want to say this kind of, I'm not responsible for everywhere else. I'm just re trying to be responsible for what God's given me responsibility over. We're interested in growing people. In fact, we, I've said it before, and I want to emphasize this. <clears throat> I don't know numerically where this church is going. Okay? I, I don't mean to sound arrogant when I say this. I hope I say this properly. I don't have to prove anything to anybody about growing the church. Okay, I've been there and done that, spent my life doing it. So this isn't about, well, we got to grow in order for us. No, no, no. We, in fact, <clears throat> I don't want to digress or, or take myself down the trail. We just, we didn't know what we were going to do with our, the, our life and ministry and the, the years that God has given to us. I don't know how many they are, 30, 40, I don't know. <clears throat> well, nobody grimaced at that, so <clears throat> I'll go on. I, I, I like what they call midlife. I like, okay, well, maybe that's good. I, I don't know, but we knew this. We, we just thought maybe we'd, we'd have a few years just to, just to be somewhere. We really thought it'd be a place that was all, you know, all a few hundred people, and we just went in, just shared. <clears throat> that wasn't what God planned. We had that, an opportunity, that, but God said, no, that's not what you need to do. And so here we are. We're just doing what God's called us to do. Let me, I want you to know this. We're not nearly as interested in growing the number as we are in growing people. I, 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 my feelings always, if you grow people, you grow. You grow in number. But let's grow people. If, if I can make, by the Holy Spirit's anointing, 
if I can help the Holy Spirit make every person in this room the absolute best version of you, people are going to, how many services will we have to have? Because people want to be a better version of themselves. We're on the journey. We're try Most people, they, get ir they want to change things about them or what's going on. They just don't know how. We all want to change things about ourselves. That's the reason I look in there. You know, you're a good-looking fellow or lady, but you look in there like, I don't like my nose. I don't like the way it looks. Like, hey, nobody paying attention. It looks good. That's you. We like that. That's that. People, if you can change it, change it. If not, that's God's beauty mark on you. Accept it and, hey, this is, this is how I am. Praise God. Okay, I'll... I can add, I know, somebody's telling me I could add a little color. I told them when I was in the baptistry, and all that light shining straight down on us, no light on face. Bo, it looked like we had white hair. <laughs> Brother, I think you need to update that little, that was the old version of you that responded right there. <laughs> Man, we all need it. Lee, hey, at least me and Brother Bo needed it. I'll tell you that right there. <laughs> all right, let's, let's move on <clears throat> real quick. Uh, I, I've said this before. This gives me, the word transform gives me a chance to show off a little, a little creek that I have. <clears throat> the, word, the word transform in, in the uh, Hebrew, or in the Greek rather, is metamorpho. I didn't put it in your outline, but I think I've got it on the screen here for you. Metamorpho. And obviously when you see that, it sounds a lot like metamorphosis. And that's the root word from which we get metamorphosis. It's the process, transformation biblically is metamorpho. It's the process of going in at one level and exiting at another. Going in the caterpillar, exiting the butterfly. <clears throat> that's the process God has us in. How many is at butterfly stage? Right? <laughs> How many want to get there? Amen. <clears throat> That's what God sees. God doesn't just see you where you are. He sees what he sees in you, the best version of you. And it's the butterfly. And you're going to come through this. Some of you are going through some stuff. You're going to come through it. But the process is part of what's getting you there. Okay? I don't like the process. I hate the process. But if you see a, if you see a cocoon and a caterpillar struggling, you, you can't help it. You only hurt it. It's a process, and God is working his process. But, but when, you're, when you come out, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. <clears throat> so we don't get saved and stop there. I just, I just want you to know, getting saved, that's great. Evangelism is a big part of the church, but discipleship is also an equally important part of the church. Because getting saved, is, that's, that's a birth certificate, not a graduation diploma. You're getting started. Okay? And we've all got so much to learn and grow. So how are we going to do this? Well, over our lifetime. And we're going to do this by, Paul said, by renewing our minds. We're going to be transformed by renewing our minds, which begs the question then begs to be asked, how do we renew our minds? How do we do that? And there's a lot of responses and a lot of good answers to that, including doing what you're doing today, coming to the house of worship. Participating in worship, singing when they sing, praying when the church prays. In, in, in public setting, it's corporate worship. In private setting, it's personal devotion. And we need both of those. We need both of those. I want to I focus the rest of my time here today on one of the things that I think is important, maybe undervalued and overlooked in all of our lives in the process of transformation. It's something I need to do better and I struggle with. And that little device that's usually in my left hand is one of the problems. And what I'm talking about is, and it's not on the outline there, it's written later on, but it's meditating, a time of meditation, taking a time of meditation. Now some of you, I say that and you think, Pastor, I can't do that. I can't cross my legs. I'll never be able to get up. <clears throat> because when some people think about meditation, they think about some Eastern guy in 
a white outfit with his legs crossed going, um, um, just say it with me, um, e pluribus unum, something like that. <clears throat> Maybe that's not what they say. <clears throat> Meditation, excuse me, meditation is not an Eastern religion thing. It's a biblical thing. And you don't need crystals and a gazing ball in order to meditate, okay? You just need to get some time with the Holy Spirit can get in here and you can hear his whisper and you can commune, communion common union with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> One of the ones in, uh, in, in the Bible, well, first of all, there's Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. They walked with God. There was a time set apart. This is God time. How, how do you believe that when they got in God's presence, it affected them? Oh, you can't be in God's presence without being affected. <clears throat> and so, uh, but one of the ones that the Bible specifically used this word of is uh, Isaac in Genesis 24, and verse 62, one of the long chapters. Now Isaac had come in, had come from Beer Lahai Roy. It's not a bar or anything, it's just a name of a place. It sounded like he'd been all drinking. <laughs> had come from Beer Laha Roy, for he was living in the Negev. He went out one evening to meditate. And as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. Now the servant of Abraham, Eleazar had gone and he had, you know, the, the story that's, that's a great story and he prayed and God answered his prayer in such a way he knew this was the one that was going to be a bride for Isaac and uh, so Isaac goes out, he goes out to meditate just goes out the evening to meditate um, I just think it's a great habit and practice in our lives and the older I get the more the, the, I recognize its value and importance and when you have decisions to make, you don't just make them. I know some things have to be made right then, but it's good just to meditate, to meditate. Jesus spent time often. He would say, he'd, he'd get up, the Bible said, before everybody else, and he'd just go out and pray and, he, and, and meditate. And look, meditation is an important part of communicating with God. It's an important part of, of prayer time. Some people think. I, I was kind of raised in this thought process. My mom taught me a lot about prayer, but she didn't teach me a lot about meditation. You, you know, the, you, you don't learn everything you get from the same place. A, and uh, I, I learned how to talk to God. But I want to tell you what I learned later, it's important to stop your talking every now and then and just listen. Amen. Don't let prayer just be a monologue. Listen, I, I, the, the Bible said with prayer, with uh, thanksgiving and, and, and with boldness we make our requests and petitions known. There's a time to do that. What I learned a long time ago, he knows a whole lot more he can tell me that I don't know than I can tell him that he don't know. What is it that he doesn't know? So I need to tell him to verbalize it, but there's so much that he knows that give me direction and wisdom and insight and understanding for my life. <clears throat> but I got to be still. I got to turn off the TV and turn off the radio, ignore the ding dings coming on the phone, and, and, and just. And, and for some of us, that's tough because we have a busyness, and busyness is busyness. And, and you just. Your mind's always going with those things. In Gethsemane, Jesus prayed for three hours. Remember? He went and prayed an hour and he came back. And went and prayed an hour and came back. Went and prayed an hour and came back. Remember that? The only thing that we have recorded that he said is that little prayer. Father, if it be possible... Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. We talked about that last week or the week before. Three hours. <clears throat> I don't think he just said that same thing for three hours. I think it's obvious a lot of that time he was praying, he was listening. He was meditating. 
He was in this... Well, let me explain it this way. Meditation that renews the mind is not just a tuning out, but also a tuning in. He wasn't just tuning out everything. He was also tuning in. You see, that's meditation of the world is tuning out. It's emptying everything out. We're, we're just, you, and sometimes we need to do that. Sometimes I just say, look, it's, it's just a fire sale. Everything's got to go. I'm getting rid of everything. <laughs> I'm just emptying my mind right now because i got too much going on. It's fire sale. Yeah, full clearance. Everything, 100% off. Just go. Just get it out. But that's not what scriptural meditation is all about. It's not just a tuning out. It's a tuning in. It's not just getting unplugged. It's getting plugged in. You see the difference? <clears throat> it's, it's not reaching the place of nothingness. It's reaching the place where now His Holy Spirit has an uninhibited communication line to us. And what he tells us, remember that song? And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. That writer had been in a time of prayerful meditation. This, that's what that walk's about. It's a walk. It's not just shouting at God and tell Him what mountains need to be moved. It's just be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. It's so hard to be still. That I am God. And if you've got a situation that needs handling, your flesh says, I'll handle this. I'll take care of this. I got in a situation. I'll get out. I'll fix this thing. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what. He wants to talk to me. I'll talk to him. No, I think I need to listen to the whisper because he can save me a lot of heartache and trouble. <clears throat> he knows the best path. He's got the higher perspective. He knows going down that path is a dead end. So if I want to renew my cell phone, what do I do? <clears throat> Plug it in. <laughs> Plug it in. Recharge the razor. Plug it in. <clears throat> so we tune in to the Spirit. <clears throat> That's why Colossians 3 and 2 says, Set your mind, notice this, Set your mind on things above. I, when I... When I read that, I picture a dial. I picture uh, like a channel. How many channels do you have? Set the channel to the Holy Spirit channel. Set your minds on things above, not your, on earthly things. Set your affections. <clears throat> there, are, there are hundreds. I, I'll say this quickly and <clears throat> we'll finish here in a moment. I'll give you a little homework. There are hundreds of signals in the air right now. <clears throat> said it earlier. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are hundreds of signals in the air. There, is, there, there are, there are uh, AM, FM, XM. God only knows. If we had the right receiver, we could pull in. The police are talking right now. There's, there's something happening on, on, on the emergency frequency. There are there's CB. I guess people still use CBs. It's right now, if we could, if we had the receiver, we could hear somebody right now saying, uh, "It's Johnny Reb uh, calling Rubber Ducky. I'll, I'm going eastbound and I'll catch you on the flip flop." Right now, it's going on. It's just out there. All kind of talk, ham radio, all kind of things. Then 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 somebody says something. Aircraft. I mean, right now there there are people communicating right now with air, airplanes and. Uh, Bo, you're a pilot. You, you got 
you got something in there that lets you communicate to the tower. And you, you don't just, I assume, you don't just get in your plane and say, hey, I'm going to fly down to Biloxi. You, you tell somebody, this is what I'm going to do. And then you wait for them to tell you something back. You better wait for them to tell you something back. You get permission before you go. See, I just, you've got many of the plans of man, but you know, you, you, need, you need to make sure the Holy Spirit's in, in agreement with what's going on. You need to get some permission before you just head out on this trip. Oh, this is what I want to do. Is this permission granted? Okay, we, 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 we go now. But you, 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 I don't know who else you'd talk to, but you, I've been in a plane where you got some dials there. You got some different frequencies. I guess you could talk to other pilots or. Do you have a volume button? Yes. Okay, so you got to, first of all, you got to have a receiver. Secondly, you got to have it set right. Third, you got to have the volume up. They may tell you to hold on a little while, but I want to go right now. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, didn't say mother may I or mother may I said no she said hold right now and the fourth thing is you got to be focused on it because they could talk to you and they could say to you what you needed to hear but if you're off in la la land oh come on y'all act like you don't ever get off in la la land some of you right now say what did he say what did he say don't let him call on me you know who you are. You call up that number and it says, hello, please listen carefully as many some selections have changed. If you're calling to about a, a tax form from the uh, and you'd like to speak with a press one. If you're calling and you're like, oh, wait a minute, was that me? Lord, I just kind of drifted off. You ever drift off during that first one? You're like, no, how many selections more are they going to have? Yeah. Now, I do that, and I keep telling focus, you got to focus, you got to focus. I'm just telling you, you can have the receiver, you can have it set, you can have the volume, but if you're still distracted, you're not going to hear what the Spirit say. Amen. Well, we've got a receiver. In fact, here's what he says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say. Yes. Well, who's got one? We all do. Well, why, why don't we all hear it? Because we don't, we're not tuned in. We don't have the volume up. We got other things distracting us. It, this is pretty simple stuff, isn't it? And I'm, I'm preaching to you because I'm one of the distracted. That's why I know about it so well. That's me, okay? That's me. So we got to stop a few minutes and take a break. I mean, not now, but I'm just saying, oh, Lord. Don't. No, life, we got to stop a few minutes and take a break. Turn the TV off. Some of us can't walk in the house without turning. We, we, we got to go to the bathroom, but we got to push the on button for we on our way. We'll, you know, and let it be warming up. We got to have something going. I'm telling you the truth. We got to have something going. We programmed ourselves that way. We got to have some kind of activity. Some of us. I told Jennifer the other night, I came in, and it's the end of a day, and I've been, you know, I posted a few things, and I was scrolling through things, and boy, you start scrolling, I told her, I said, come in, and says, you've reached the end of the internet, it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> you, you've seen it all. It's easy just to, just to scroll. And so, here's, what, here's your homework. And this is, this is, you don't have to answer this to me, answer to you, to the Lord. My holy think time, that's what we're going to call it. My holy think time this week is blank. Well, you know when you're going to get up and you know pretty well when you're going to eat breakfast. You know when you're going to have supper. You know when you're going to go to work. you got other plans. Pencil in a time. Ten minutes. Take you five to ten minutes. You can, you can block it. You can shut everything else off for five to ten minutes. And just go in and just... Talk to him. Now, Lord, I just, I want to be a better person. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better father. Talk to me, Lord. What do I need to do? I'm looking at some changes and some things I need to do. Help me to, help me to do the right thing. Now, here's what's going to happen. <clears throat> Two things, real quick. Number one, expect creative problem-solving ideas. God's going to tell you some things that you hadn't been thinking about. 
I'll say this in 15 seconds. Before we knew that God was holy, I did a sermon on this early when I got here. Before we knew that God was holy, we knew he was creative. In the beginning, God created. The first thing he revealed about himself and his holy word to us is that he is creative. That same chapter says, you're made in his image after his likeness. God built you with creative powers in you. You ought to be, you ought to be creative. You got a problem nobody else can solve, the Holy Spirit will tell you how to solve it. Creative. <clears throat> and so what happens is, some, sometimes you get a... My best creativity it doesn't happen in the office generally. It happens when you're away. Every, every business owner knows you're not just punching the clock eight to five. You're thinking about it. And, and, and you get ideas. You get ideas in the shower. You got ideas when you're just out sitting on the porch. You get ideas when, you, when you're driving down the road. Andrew, you got a lot of driving down the road, a lot of think time, <clears throat> a, lot, a lot of time to reflect, a lot of time to think. Some of you, your time of wandering away and reflecting is during the sermon. No, I mean, that's not when you need to use it, but I've done it before, even while I was preaching. <clears throat> so, uh, vacation's a good time. It's not just, a, you know, I love getting away. I love going to the beach and the water. Uh, not because I, I don't care for the sand, but I just love, I love getting, tuning out and tuning in. And, and just... Oh, there's just something about that. That's, um, it's, it's, it's a spiritual moment. It's a spiritual thing. I, I felt it when we were at uh, Niagara Falls. And I, visiting Niagara Falls was a very spiritual experience for me. V visiting Victoria Falls was a very, just, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just God. This is awesome. And, and God began to whisper. Okay, last thing. What's going to happen when you get in this time of holy think time is you're going to hear the whisper that builds faith and brings success. You can try to be successful. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. To me, it's real clear. The reason he brought what he brought is because God said, this is what I want you to bring. Faith comes by hearing. Cain had the same opportunity. He just wasn't listening. He wasn't tuned in right. You want, you want to operate in faith? Listen to him. He'll tell you. And if he tells you he likes apple cobbler and not blueberry, don't give him blueberry because that's what you like. Give him what God says he wants. I think he likes both, but. So he says, this is how I want you to praise me. I want your heart in it. I don't just want this. I want this. Find out what he wants. Give it to him, and, and, you, and you do it in faith. Let, let me give you three scriptures. I'm done. Come on. You can be work. Come on up. Here. Uh, two more. Bless, Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walks not the counsel of the ungodly, doesn't stand in the way of sinners, doesn't sit in the sea of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He meditates on God's word. And what happens to this guy? <laughs> He's like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He brings forth his fruit in the season. His leaf doesn't wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. That's the guy we want to be. Where does it start? Meditating in God's word. Just constantly having his word in in here. Give you the last one. Joshua. Don't let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. The Holy Whisper will bring, build faith and bring success. I, I want success in my life. I want success in my job. I want success in yours. I want, the best success is when God's blessings on it. And not just you sitting back and letting, letting God paint. You've got to go out there and paint. You've got to do the work. 
but God will put you in the right place, the right people, the right time, right connections. God will help you make the bid right. God will help you do the job right. He'll help you see the problems before they happen <clears throat> because you're anointed. You're a child of God. God's with you. God's favor is on you. I just feel like somebody's hearing God say something today, and I'm, I hope... I hope somebody else besides me is getting something out of this. Hey, at home, uh, look, we hope you're blessed. I know it's a cold day outside. And maybe you got a, a blanket or a, a dog or a, or your spouse or a kid and just kind of hugged up close. And, you know, it's just a good day just to feel the warmth of God's presence and know that God's with us. And you're not doing this journey of life by yourself. And it's a challenge. Everybody else has a challenge, too. We have problems in our home. They've got problems in theirs. You got, with it, we got physical problems of the house we're dealing with. Hey, it's all, everybody's got challenges. Life is life. But we're, we're better than we were last year because he's changing us. He's making us new. He's making all things fresh. He's making all things alive. I need that. So do you. Let's stand. <clears throat> Father, thank you for your spirit today. Thank you for what we feel and sense in the place. For those, Lord, who have not committed their lives to you fully and completely, let this be the moment they do that. <clears throat> for all of us, Lord, teach us to be closer to you, to be surrendered daily to hear what the whisper of the spirit is. Thank you, Lord, for being patient with me, for being loving with me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I preach longer than I intended to, intended to. You guys looked at me like you were listening the whole time. If you were faking it, you did really well. <clears throat> I'll do better next time. <clears throat> we're going to receive our offering in, in a moment. I just want to say to those at home today, if you haven't made a commitment of your life to Christ, I know some people watch this live and some, you know, there's several hundred views over the course of a, a week. We don't know how long all of those are. But some of you sent us messages and told us how that God's, God's, He's talking to you through what we're sharing. I just want to say it to you at home today that God knows where you are. He knows who you are. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're facing. And the best thing you can do about your situation is just give it to Him. And give yourself to Him and, and say, Lord, here I am. And I surrender. I submit. You never go wrong by submitting and surrendering to the Holy Spirit. You just can't go wrong that way. So uh, before we receive an offering, we've got, we've got something we're going to sing here in just a minute. But... Can we just pray one more time for, for those that's not committed to Christ? Father, I just pray that for that person that they're broken and they're hurting and they know that part of their problem is they're not surrendered to you. I just pray, Lord, in this moment they would just swallow every bit of personal pride that they've got and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Forgive me, Lord, and change me and make things different in my world. Make me a new creature. Lord, you, you, you said through the preacher that old things have passed away and all things are new when we come to Christ. I want that to happen in my life. We pray that takes place by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If that happened to you, let us know in the room as we receive our offering today. If you've made a commitment to Christ of any sort, you've got a prayer request, you can put that on the connection card as, as the ushers come. Ushers come today. Amen. We'll do several things here at once. God bless you guys. Thank you. Let me say thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, we'll have a business meeting in a few days. I think you'll be pleased with how the people of this congregation, small as it is, have been faithful. And God's going to bless you. He's blessing us here at the church through you. In Jesus' name, bless the gifting giver. Amen. Amen. Let's sing and worship. Please.
It's hard to take the first step when I don't know the way. Plans for me are perfect. I've learned to walk by faith. Oh, but you gave me a promise. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the great word that touches our heart. Help us, Lord, to, to be sensitive and be led by the Spirit. And as the Lord would lead us sometimes in, in, in paths that sometimes are a little difficult, let us focus. Let us put in our heart, Lord, not my will, thy will be done. And, oh, Lord, as we do that, we will become more and more every day the people man, the woman, the boy, the girl that you desired us to be. And that's what we want to be, what you want us to be. So lead us as we go out of this building today, not from your presence, but lead us in the paths of righteousness for your namesake in this beautiful day. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Shake hands. Love somebody. Tell them you're glad to see them today. So glad to see you. Amen.